series. Hello, capitalist dogs. I am General Kuruko. Hey, it's your friendly neighborhood initiate again. Our previous theory video was surprisingly well received. I was expecting everyone to go boo, Yuri never got busy, but instead, I got lots of positive comments from you guys as well as this. He is going to be able to escape. Of course, as we all know, Yuriko, secretly the daughter of Yuri. Guess that theory is canon now. Let's make more theories. So among all the responses I received from the last video, this one in particular stood out to me. Basically it says Kurukov is Boris. Sounds like a stretch, right? But upon further research, I realized that Krukov is a lot deeper than the random Soviet official he appears to be. So this theory will be divided into two parts. Either Krukov is Boris, or Krukov is the Soviet commander you played as in Red Alert 2. Let's take a step back and appreciate those three for a bit. Chedenko, Dr. Zelinsky, and Grukov are the only three individuals in Red Alert 3 that are from the original Red Alert 2 timeline we know and love. Sure, Red Alert 3 might also have Tanya and Lieutenant Eva, but they're just alternate universe versions of themselves. Those three gentlemen, on the other hand, were around when the events of Red Alert 2 took place before they took the time machine to this new world order. Tim Curry was just a low-ranking nobody, and his nerdy scientists have been underground for years, so there's not much to him. General Krukov, however, was a highly ranked Soviet officer. He was someone significant. The focus of our question is, who exactly is Krukov? Could he perhaps be someone we already knew from the older games? Boris was the Soviet commando added in Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge. He quickly became a fan's favorite, which Westwood clearly did not anticipate because they did not even give Boris any character development whatsoever. We don't even know what Boris's last name is. And that's where our theory starts. According to a loading screen in Red Alert 3, General Grukov's first name is Boris. So what if the Red Alert 2 Boris's last name was Grukov all this time? Then he proceeded to make a terrible life decision and shaved off his sick beard. Of course, there are a lot more parallels between those two than their name. Let's take a look at how Boris was first introduced in the Red Alert 2 Soviet campaign. Boris reporting. This is Boris, Comrade General. He is equipped with superior weapons and has full authority to call in an airstrike. He is one of our finest soldiers and a hero to the Soviet people. Good luck, sir. Notice that Boris was referred to as a hero to the Soviet people. How is Grukov introduced in his profile? A war hero in the eyes of the Soviet people. Aside from that, Boris and Grukov also share a similar personality. Boris is prideful, and rightly deserves to be. You know what he likes to say? Boris has arrived. I have important mission. Russia's fate is with me. There's nothing I cannot do. Even though he cannot swim. General Grukov here is infamous for his arrogance. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a nation to defend. I guess I have to do everything around here. Pay attention, comrade. And maybe next time you might have success without me. Anything is possible, I suppose. Whether you noticed or not, there are some striking similarities between Boris and Krukov's attitude. I hear what you say, sure, Boris might happen to resemble Krukov a bit, but there had to be a lot of Soviet war heroes who happened to be arrogant. Except there wasn't. Let me fill you in with some Command and Conquer lore education here. This is the timeline of the Red Alert 2 era. Krukov lived through here and proceeded to move on to a separate Red Alert 3 timeline via time travel. The thing is, there is a transitional period between Red Alert 2 and Red Alert 3, known as the post-war crisis. In a nutshell, after Yuri was removed from the picture, the Allies and Soviets broke their alliance and continued to fight for years until the Soviet Union was pushed to the brink of collapse, which led to the time travel sequence at the beginning of Red Alert 3. Little is known about what happened during the post-war crisis, as there is not a game taking place during this time. Nope, I lied. The lesser known Red Alert iOS installment was set exactly during the crisis. This was right after Yuri's Revenge and before Red Alert 3 where all the units and buildings still looked familiar, like the old times, but before Grailcopters became flying busters that freeze stuffs. There are a lot of insights we can get regarding the whereabouts of classic characters like Boris if we take a look at this mobile game. 
Right at the beginning of the game, the commander is addressed as one of the last surviving commanding officers. It is thus safe to assume that most high-ranking Soviet officers had either fled or been killed. All of a sudden, the chances that we had two high-ranking operating Soviet war heroes that shared the same name and personality became really slim. It is more likely for Krukov to be Boris than to be a completely random other guy. If we keep going with the iOS game, we are greeted with... Natasha? Major plot twist, Natasha was in the Red Alert 2 timeline all along. She just never got a chance to surface before Boris was gone. Now why would the game that took place right after Red Alert 2 have Natasha as the commando assisting us, while Boris is nowhere to be seen? Let me lay out the possibilities. Maybe Boris was dead. I'm assuming not many of you want to buy into that idea. Our boy has the plot hammer after all. So here's your option B. Boris was still around, but at some point during the post-war crisis, he got promoted to a position high enough that he no longer fought on the front line. This would even explain why Natasha had such similar abilities to Boris. Maybe Boris mentored her before passing his position to her. Maybe he even gave over his equipment and authority to call in airstrikes because he didn't need them anymore. Now, no matter how many obscure games and timeline bits we dig up, there can be no concrete evidence linking Boris to General Krukov. There just isn't much to draw on from Boris, who is such an as sophisticated character with little background info attached. But there is a second, better supported possibility to Krukov's identity. General Krukov is the Soviet commander you played as in Red Alert 2. Remember the in-game incarnation of you, the player, who went on all those epic missions alongside Zofia, won countless victories and rose to a position of glory. This faceless guy you played as may have proceeded to become the General Krukov we know today. Before we lay out all the connections between Krukov and the nameless Soviet commander from Red Alert 2, let's first establish the storyline we're analyzing. The plot of Yuri's revenge could have played out in two different ways depending on whether the Allied or Soviet campaign story was canon. It is my belief that the events of Red Alert 3 followed the Soviet campaign of Yuri's revenge. I hear what you're saying. The Soviets were losing when Red Alert 3 started. That's why Tim Curry resorted to time travel in the first place. You would assume that the Allies won the war of the Psychic Dominator disaster and went on to tear down the USSR. Let's go back to the post-war crisis backstory again. It is stated that the Allies were simply prepared to fight the Soviets before the Soviets could recover from their war against Yuri. No matter which side had the upper hand while fighting Yuri, the Allies would have won during the post-war crisis regardless. Now let's go back to watch the opening cinematic of Red Alert 3 again. The Premier is gone! Yes, the coward has already fled. The USSR is at death's door, comrade. Notice a small detail here. It sounded like shortly before Red Alert 3 took place, Premier Romanov was still in power. As we know, the Allies captured Romanov by the end of Red Alert 2, which led to the events of Yuri's Revenge. Even though we got to see Romanov once in the Allied campaign of Yuri's Revenge, he was escorted by a Nighthawk and accompanied by two GIs clearly in the Allies' custody. It is only in the Soviet mission that we stole an allied time machine and restored Romanov to the position of Premier. So the events of the Soviet campaign has to have preceded Red Alert 3 in order for Krukov to say the coward has already fled. No matter what Westwood had originally intended, the developers of Red Alert 3 favored the Soviet campaign timeline. Even their April Fool's Mammoth Tank story featured a malevolent force stranded in prehistory that will return to get revenge, which is obviously a nod to Yuri's fate at the end of the Soviet campaign. Okay, yeah, I know, Mammoth Tank isn't canon, but still. After all that detour, let's get back on our task of unmasking General Grukov. Lots of people have pointed out the facts that Grukov seemed very nice in the beginning. He acted politely in front of Dasha, which was inconsistent with his personality. Ah, good to see you, sir. I have the reports from the front that you requested. Thank you. What do you have for me? But what if the reason Krukov treated military commissioners nicely is because he had once been close to a certain other intelligence officer? Forgive me for speaking frankly, but it might help you to know that upon your return I hope to see you in Moscow. Winter there is cold, yes? But this winter... 
could be different? Back to the beginning of Red Alert 3, it was clear that Chudinko wanted to drag along Krukov to his field trip to Brussels because Krukov was in a much higher position. Like we mentioned earlier, it is a big deal to see any high-ranking acting officer still around by the end of the post-war crisis. Going back to the Yuri's revenge story, exactly what position was our commander promoted to after the final mission? Marshal of the Soviet Union, which so happens to be exactly Krukov's military ranking. Furthermore, we've always liked to assume Krukov was just a prideful bastard with no real competence to back up his hubris. But perhaps Krukov wasn't just doing empty talks. Why don't we assign the young commander to that task? This is not an operation for a novice. We need someone with plastics. I have... This won't be the last time we meet. And next time, your general won't be there to rescue you. Even with the finest military mind in the world on your side, you managed to find defeat. Throughout the cutscenes, he was clearly shown to be experienced as a battle commander and perceived as highly successful by all. Sounds like you are a Soviet commander from Red Alert 2? After all, your commander single-handedly broke apart Yuri's forces without ever testing defeat. If he had survived the post-war crisis, he would have been viewed by all as a legend. This matches up pretty well with Krukov's reputation. Our last not so much of an evidence is a direct parallel between what happened to Krukov and what almost happened to the unnamed Soviet commander. Krukov was seen as the only threat to Premier Chudenko besides you. Similar to how Yuri wanted to get rid of you towards the end of Red Alert 2. Comrade General, you are proving even more tenacious than I thought. What a great threat you are to your enemies. Do me this favor. Grace me with your presence in Moscow, so I may thank you in person. In the mission where we retaliated against Yuri, we played as Red, fought enemies of a different color, and wrapped up by facing off with your own Soviet forces labeled as purple. What about the Red Alert 3 mission where we dueled with Krukov? We were Red Soviets, fighting an enemy of a different color and eventually turned against Krukov, again represented by purple. It's almost as if the grand finale against Krukov was directly inspired by the Red Alert 2 mission where an innocent commander, or our younger Krukov, was being prosecuted by the Premier as a traitor. Krukov had always been the good guy here. In a sense, your objective in Red Alert 3 was really to tear down the legacy you built up back in Red Alert 2 with your own hands, bit by bit, chunk by chunk, until the commander you raised up crumbled and fell. But hey, that's just a theory. A theory where the major fly did not dress whether Krukov is bodies or the Red Alert 2 commander you played as. There's one thing that does make sense. Krukov was doubtful about Chetenko's plan to travel back in time and restore the Soviet Union. Even though both the unnamed commander and Boris had previously done exactly that together at the beginning of Yuri's revenge. You cannot be serious. Come, comrade general. A new world order awaits. Could it be that the developers didn't communicate well enough with Krukov's actor regarding their intents? No. Even on his storyboard, Krukov was clearly shown to be nervous about this whole time travel shenanigan. Either Boris or the unnamed commander would have been like, yeah, I've done this before, let's do it again, bring it on. Who knows, maybe you just never get used to time traveling. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed that theory. Let me know who you think Krukov is. Is he really just some random person or is there more to him? Also, please comment down below some wild theory ideas and I'll do the research and make more Command & Conquer theories. What? What sort of... Oh!